Yixiang, auspicious greetings. My name is Miao Guang from Foguangshan Institute of Humanistic Buddhism. Today, it is my honor to be speaking on the topic Post-COVID-19 Acculturation of Humanistic Buddhism and the Development of the Foguangshan Buddhist Order. As humanity thought they were comfortably sitting at the peak of the global village advancement, whereby the world is defined as a single community of interdependent beings who are connected to each other by electronic communications, mass media, and easy travel. Their preparedness to confront a global crisis was put to test by the COVID-19 pandemic. The year 2020 has been earmarked as the worst year of the 21st century. The coronavirus, invisible to the naked eye, has caused a substantial number of deaths and disrupted health, economic, and educational systems around the world. Public health responses around the world have included travel restrictions, quarantines, and curfews, which include lockdowns of cities and outdoor restrictions. Life was slowed down, and for some, almost brought to a halt from the lack of physical connection to the public, the workplace, as well as families and friends. Fear of shortage of medical and daily supplies has caused public panic. Moreover, violence arising from racial prejudice and at home are happening everywhere. In general, a global fear of infection and distrust continue to seep through the world. Fortunately, humanity has not been totally helpless. Medical professionals have risked their own lives to remain at the front line to help those infected by the virus. Scientists develop vaccines at a rate faster than ever before. World leaders continue their efforts to keep citizens safe and well. Most importantly, self-aware minds have reminded us to remember that this is an opportunity to think our future and make the necessary actions and changes for all lives on Earth to better coexist as one, including with the virus. For such reasons, many have asked the question, how can humanistic Buddhism help us find peace and security in such dire moments? Founded in 1967 by Venerable Master Xingyun, Bo Guangshan order began to thrive around the globe in the 1990s. With the objectives of propagating humanistic Buddhism to benefit human interest under the value of Dharma, branch temples and centers of small and large scales have been set up in 200 of the world's major cities across the five continents that serve over 2 million devotees and members. These centers have since served as a spiritual home for Buddhists, mainly Chinese or Asian immigrants in the beginning, and gradually joined by the local communities who shared the Buddhist values of loving-kindness, compassion, equanimity, and altruistic joy beyond the boundaries of race, language, and culture. During those years, in-person attendance was the only way for temple gatherings and events to take place. Added with limited telecommunications availability compared to now, these communities remain regional and largely separated from its global Foguangshan families unless they hopped on a plane and visited the Foguangshan headquarters in Taiwan or joined the annual Buddha's Light International Association's General Conference an organization that offers lay Buddhists the opportunity to also take on the roles of disseminating the Dharma and reaching out to the world. In my 2015 paper on issues of acculturation and globalization faced by the Foguangshan Buddhist order, I used the models of separation, assimilation, marginalization, and integration to describe Foguangshan's process of involvement in both the culture of settlement and the culture of origin in countries such as Australia, North America, Brazil, and the Philippines 
to demonstrate the strategies adopted to bridge two or more culturally and linguistically distinguishable communities. Between the year 2000 and 2010, given the advantages of easy travel and advanced communication technology, Guangshan and Blia began to grow rapidly as a tightly bonded global community under the four objectives. One, to foster talent through education. Two, to propagate dharma through culture. Three, to benefit society through charitable works. And four, to purify human minds through spiritual cultivation. Frequent in-person exchanges in different countries enable the members to become closer to each other and enjoy a global Buddhist fellowship that offered mental, spiritual, and daily life support from the intricate web of affinities they have established through attending these global events and spending time with each other while staying inside the monastery or conference venue. This local and global closeness was disrupted by COVID-19 in early 2020. Travel restrictions and city lockdowns meant that members were no longer able to visit their nearby temple or pay their annual pilgrimage to the Foguangshan headquarters in Taiwan freely. The Foguangshan monastics were also confronted by all kinds of challenges. Just to name a few. One, Care programs for the sick and needy, as well as chanting services for those whose lives were taken by the coronavirus, could only be online. Personal outreach activities were temporarily halted. Two, the weekly collective cultivation sessions in the forms of chanting, meditation, reading groups, dharma classes, children's class, Leah Scouts, Evergreen class, and service programs came to a halt as in-person attendance was not an option during the pandemic. 3. Members and devotees' spiritual bond with the temple became harder to maintain since even the regular greetings and smiles of the monastics that usually offered a moment of joy and peace were only available on screen. After all, Real-life engagement and conversations are what keeps human beings together. 4. The longer devotees and members are away from the community, the less likely they will return in the future. Therefore, retention and continued support for the temple is also another challenge. In response to these challenges, the Dharma propagation activities at the temples quickly made adjustments to adapt. For example, temples created care packages including dharma booklets, blessing charms, great compassion water, mini packages of rice and ointments were posted to the homes of each member. By sharing these common possessions alongside other members, a sense of belonging was maintained. YouTube channels and podcasts offering online chanting services, children's stories, Panel discussions, dharma talks were created in Mandarin, English, Portuguese, Spanish, French, and other languages to ensure regular access to dharma words. To encourage closer contact with the temple while observing social distance and masked rules, drive through blessings and greetings on Sangha Day by monastics, and vegetarian meal box deliveries became an alternative way to taste the food and joy of Dharma. In larger temples, room and board for overseas students or home deliveries were offered to ensure that no one is alone or will go hungry. To stay creative, online parties and meal gatherings were also an option to help keep families together. In addition, Calendar Buddhist events also moved online to provide virtual experiences such as bathing the Buddha, light offering. Online donation for devout members have also been made available to maintain support for the temple. Though Fo Guangshan responded quickly to the challenges, certain problems prevail. First of all, 
Younger and elderly members may not be as tech savvy to keep up with all the virtual gadgets, and remote assistants to set up these devices are also a challenge. Seeing each other on flat screens may offer some kind of comfort from the physical isolation at first, but fatigue grows from the constant staring of 2D images that lack a sense of closeness and human warmth. Which cause decreased willingness to join online. Secondly, computer monitors and screens offered narrow visions for monastics and members to detect any level of distress or problems members or devotees may be facing at home. Thirdly, long-term lockdowns and movement control orders could take away the motivation to stay engaged with people or even to exercise. The gray zone between work and home time inside the household has lessened people's social abilities since there is not much opportunity for formal social contacts and interactions. This means people are more likely to retract than move towards each other in the face of danger. There are also pros and cons of easier access to online gatherings. The pros are that members and devotees have access to almost any monastic dharma teacher from Foguangshan, compared to the days when they had to wait for a selected monastic to physically be in their local temple to conduct services or give dharma talks. Reading groups with members other than those from their cities became an eye-opening experience to share and hear cross-cultural, linguistic. And religious approaches to living the Dharma and confronting daily life problems. With the aid of technology, up to a dozen language translations can be provided by the large talent pool at Foguangshan, whilst overcoming the language and information barriers that used to be costly and time-consuming to overcome. The virtual social group expanded rapidly to lessen the sense of isolation and loneliness. Thereby realizing the Buddhist concept of the Indra's net, where we are all single nodes that are connected to one another infinitely. On the other hand, the cons of such gatherings meant many had to overcome time differences and language barriers. Compared to the days of physical movement to and from locations, where the travel time or resting time acted as buffer zones to mentally adjust or physically recuperate. Many could be interacting with Taipei this moment, and then Paris in the immediately following hour. As a result, disorientation could occur and lessen the effects of online interactions that were meant to bring forth a sense of connectedness and safety. Such a shift of Dharma propagation structure across the Foguangshan order has brought forth the following changes: one, without the limitations of time. Location and physical space, the concept of oneness and coexistence has been further realized by the Foguangshan and Blia community as a whole. This means certain types of collective cultivation may never become marginalized or even isolated by geography or language. Two, solidarity of faith. Is greatly enhanced through easier connection to the headquarters and the order's head abbot. For example, in the recent Tongshuo ceremony that took place, new members of the monastic order who were not able to travel to Foguangshan in Taiwan to receive the head abbot's blessing were able to attend the ceremony simultaneously online from New Zealand, mainland China, Malaysia, Japan, and Hong Kong. Making it feel like those from around the globe were receiving the blessings all together. Thirdly, centralized and synchronized mobilization enabled a top-down execution of strategies to confront the pandemic. In April 2021, when India was severely struck by the deadly Delta coronavirus. Blia World Headquarters in LA was able to immediately mobilize all resources in Southeast Asia to deliver oxygen machines, respirators, protective garments, masks, and other medical supplies. This was partly due to the lessened sense of separation by physical space. 
Now that the pandemic seems to have eased, and humanity has somehow come to terms in coexisting with the coronavirus, what will be the next step of development for Foguangshan? As mentioned before, by acculturation, it involves a culture of origin and a culture of settlement. Post-COVID acculturation will now add a third type of culture, that is, the virtual global culture comprising an immense range of cultural, linguistic, and racial diversity. While the barriers of some of these can be overcome much faster and more effectively with the aid of technology, for example, exchange of knowledge and information, translation of languages, integration of cultural values and practices in daily life encouraged by a diverse but close global community. More importantly, the example of Foguangshan and Bliya mentioned in my presentation will demonstrate even greater consolidation of resources, talents, manpower under the shared value of humanistic Buddhism. The Buddhism that holds true to the Buddha's original intent to regard all beings as equals and family, embraces diversity and celebrates solidarity, and offers unconditional loving kindness and universal compassion, all for the purpose of achieving happiness and well being for the whole of humanity. An inclusive global community of this kind shall contribute greatly to peaceful minds sustainable relationships, happy families, better societies, and a peaceful world. Thank you very much.